Okay. And I think uh, this is where, where we stopped last time. And so what we're going to do today is actually we're going to just go back a few slides, just do a quick review. And before we move on to cover more content. Um, so really, um, uh, the main thing we covered last week is about different uh, markers and channels. And so we first talk about what they are, what are the marks, and marks are used to represent the items in your data collection and the channels and what they are, and they are usually used to represent the attributes of the items in your collection, for example, the price of the a product or the weight of product. And so I'm not sure if you, uh, anyone remember some examples of marks? Anyone? Uh, points, line, area. Yes, exactly. So we talk about, say, uh, 1D, 2D, actually, we start with 0D, mm -hmm. and then 1D, 2D, and even 3D marks. And so the dimension here means kind of the dimension that you can change in terms of the mark itself. For 0D mark, which you can't change any dimension, so that's why it's called 0D, it's only, so that's point. And then we have 1D, which you can change one dimension and it becomes a line, and that's a line. And you can have a straight or curved line. And for 2D, we have different shapes and et cetera, et cetera. And anyone remembers any type of channels? Anyone? Position. Position, yeah. Is one of them. Yeah, exactly right. That's right. Anyone else? And I'm gonna just pick on anyone randomly. Amima, do you remember any channels from last week? You got vertical vertical position channels also too. Sorry, can you say vertical this? position channels? And um, what's the first one? I think the second one is position. Yeah. Okay. How about um, what did you put on So I think like channels would be, um, so, shapes. hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. shape. Shape, yes, okay. Yeah, shape is also one. And uh, position. Position, yes. I think everyone seems to remember position, which is really good. Tommy, did you say anything or? Color. Color, Color yeah, yeah. And size? Size, yeah, exactly. And um, area. Sorry. And she, can you say it again? I didn't quite area. Know. Area. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah. Um. So if you can see my screen now, so I can show you that's the list of and um, possible channels, and this is not an exhaustive list, but uh, including the most common ones. And uh, if you, so I probably mentioned this is maybe one of the most important things you can learn and for the data visualization. And so on the left hand side, we have this list of channels which are used to represent uh, quantitative values or ordered values. And on the right hand side or the right part is the channels that's usually used to represent categorical channels. Sorry, categorical attributes. And the second thing to remember is these channels are ordered based on their effectiveness. So the ones on top are most effective and the ones at the bottom are less effective in relative order. And also we have something like here, which says color luminance and color saturation. They say they have more or less the same effectiveness. And similarly for curvature and volume, the 3D size. Okay, <clears throat> and then on this side we have the categorical ones. And the most important thing to remember is when we try to use this in the actual design, depends on the type of your attributes. If it's say ordered or quantitative, or if it's a categorical type of attributes, you try to pick the most effective. Uh, 
and channel they can use. And then to do that, and because you usually have more than one attribute you want to show, then you have to decide, okay, which attribute is most important. So if you have two different attributes and they both of them are quantitative, and if one is already using the position on the common scale, which is the most effective one for the quantitative or numerical attributes, and then the second one is still possible if it's also a quantitative attribute, but it can't be the same dimension, it has to be a second dimension. And then if you have two attributes, and one is quantitative or ordered, the other one is categorical. And then when you apply, you have to decide which one you're going to use position for, because and position are both if most effective for both the quantitative or the categorical attributes. For example, if it's decided the number or the numerical attributes is most important, and then you can use this for that attribute. But for the next attribute, which is categorical, you can't use spatial region anymore because the position is used to represent attributes already. So you have to pick these ones. So the second one will be color. So that's probably the best choice. And then so on. We have three, four, or five attributes. And you have to make that decision and say which one is most important. And then that gets allocated to the most effective channel and so on and so forth. OK, and then we talked a little bit about, OK, and how do we decide? and why it's better. So for example, how do we come up with this list? Why do we think the location is most effective for the categories? And then why the color is next, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, so one of the experiments we showed you is this, or more like the theory. And it's something like this. And so one of the criteria to make it a good channel to represent numerical value is we want to make sure the physical intensity changes matches well and with perceived changes. And so in this case, and lens is really good in the sense, and if for example, the lens increased by two, people visually would see the lens changed by two. And some other, some attributes would have a less kind of perceived changes. So example, including area and depth, so the experiment shows if the area or depth increased by twice, uh, the actual perceived change is maybe somewhere here, 1.5, 1.6. And whereas on this side, and you have the saturation, which is the amount of the color, how deep the color is, and it has a exaggerated perceived changes in the sense if it doubles, so it increased from one to two, but the actual perceived changes may be more than twice, maybe three times or something like that. Okay, and then we do some examples. Uh, so somehow uh, everyone actually did very well. There seems to notice kind of distortion in perceived changes among this cohort, which is very interesting and actually the first time it happened. And so we compared, say, the perceived changes between the saturation and actually this is like a twice as blue as this one and most people pick the correct answer and usually people might tend to pick the 2.5 and over exaggerate so over exaggerated the perceived difference and lens is one which should match quite nicely to the actual change and finally for the area i was expecting more people would pick and one and a half, as this one is maybe just one and a half times of this size. But again, most people actually pick the correct ones. Okay, I think this is where we kind of stopped uh, last week. And this week we're gonna continue and uh, look at some other criteria that people used when we tried to say, to decide which channel is good to represent your attributes. Okay. <clears throat> So the next one is the discriminability. And so what that means is say, how many different, how many different, let's say, how many different values you can perceive using that channel. So you can imagine, say, if you use size, 
when the difference between the two lens, for example, is very small, and it's become difficult to tell visually, unless, for example, in the bar charts, they're perfectly aligned, they can easily to see. So usually the higher the discriminability, the better the channel. Okay, and some channels has a very limited distributional levels. Okay, so for example, I'm here picking something called line width, and so that using the width of the line to show the different values. And the experiment shows you can only use that to represent a few different values. So if you look at this visualization, and I think it indicates the trade between different countries. And so you can see that's the UK here, and this is Ireland here, and this line indicates the trade between UK and Ireland. And the width of the line indicates the amount of trade. So the thicker the line, the more trade between the two countries. So you can easily see, okay, the UK and Ireland have lots of trade. The other big ones, maybe UK between Germany, UK between France, these are all fairly, and I guess it's quite nothing surprise. And you can also say, okay, UK and between UK and Norway, the line is fairly thin. So you see it's less and trade between these two countries. And actually, are you able to see the text in the visualization? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. So it could be a bit small, but hopefully you can. But you can roughly imagine because that's the map. You should, you can roughly tell this is the Scandinavia countries. That's Norway, Sweden, etc. Okay. So the point I tried to make here is, and the different line ways that you can see, and and still tell they are different is rather limited. In this case, it only has three levels. So anything. I think above 500 will be this width, and this is something between 500 and 250, and this is 100 million, oh sorry, millions, yeah. So you can imagine it's not quite possible to have many, say 10 different levels. See, if you can break all the ranges into 10 different widths, line widths, and you start still trying to show it, it might become difficult because the difference between different levels will be so small, it will be difficult to tell whether the two are the same or one is larger or smaller. Okay. Yeah, and also, and there's another potential issue here is you cannot increase the width and indefinitely. And because, for example, if you make the width very, very wide, and people may no longer perceive this part as a line, but they rather think this is a rectangle. And that's definitely not something we want to achieve here. Okay, and so this is discriminability. And that's also one thing uh, we use when to, to evaluate if it's channel is good and for representing attributes, especially numerical ones. Obviously, the more discriminable, the better the channel. Okay, and next one is also related, it's called uh, separability. Okay, so not all visual channels are completely independent from each other. And some have dependency because and the values you set in one channel, for example, size, might affect the other channels, for example, the color of the marker. Okay, so you have these different channels. So there are channels which are completely orthogonal and independent. So these are called separable channels. So they don't affect each other. And you can also have integrated channels or integral channels, which means the two channels are very closely linked and it's not completely possible. It's not possible to completely separate them. And then sometimes there's somewhere in between, okay. So visual encoding is straightforward with separate, separable channels. So in those cases, you don't have to consider what other channels being used. You just focus on the one at hand and it should work. And whereas if you, you try to use integral channels, which then in other, in other words, the channels are what affect each other, 
And then some of the designs may fail. And in a sense, you really have to consider what are the other channels being used. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do again do a quick example here or experiment here. So we're going to show you some examples to see to see if you can see the different uh, channels in the data. So, for example, uh, in this one, and can you see different groupings in this realization, and how many are there? Does that make sense? Or there's two groups. Two groups. Two groups. And what are the two groups? Like the red group and the blue group. Okay, so that's one way of grouping this is by the color. So you show, and um, red. The coloring is one of the way to do the grouping. So one color represents a group. Does anyone see any other groupings? Uh, the fact that one's on the right and one's on the left. Yes. OK, so the position is another way to do the grouping. So you can see a second type of grouping of maybe say this is on the left hand side is one group. And this is on the right hand side is a different group. So basically, we, here we're using two channels. One is the position to indicate the groupings and sec second one using color to indicate the groupings. So in this case, um, they all have two groups each. And one is position, one is Q, which essentially is color. And they are fully separable. In the sense, you can easily see the groupings indicated by either channels. They don't really mix. So, that, so that in the sense, that's good. So this is the example of the fully separated uh, channel and let's have a look at the next one and again so that's the same question say how many different groupings you can see and how many groups in each grouping there's uh, three and uh, sorry three groupings or three groups uh, so the groups. grouping means the way to make out groups. So for example, in the first example, there's using color or position. That's the two ways of grouping. <clears throat> and within each grouping, you have two groups. And so how many different groupings are here? Three. Three. And yeah. can you expand on that and say, what are these three different groupings? Um, so the size, because of the size of the circles. Yeah. Color as well. Color as well, because there's two color. ways two but um the size is three sorry um the size is three because there's three different types of circles ah uh, okay, okay okay i see and so i think what you meant is, is there's two different groupings one is by size the size of a circle the other one by color yes so if we look at the color, there's two groups, the blue group and the purple group. And if we look at the size, and they, there are three groups. So there's the big one, and the medium one, which is only this one, and the small one. Yeah, does that think that's Yeah, what that's what I was trying to say, yeah. Okay, and um, again, so, Oh. So I think that's correct. So we're having two groupings. One is by size, one is by color. It's really meant to have uh, two groups each. And it's, and so this is probably should not be uh, this big. It should be a smaller one or either smaller or bigger one. And, but what potentially can happen is um, when the, can the marker becomes really small because of this size grouping, it might put an affect people's perceive on the color. It might make it harder to see just because it's smaller. So there's some inferences, but still not that much. I think we can still see the two groupings fairly well. Okay, I'm gonna see in the next example. And the same questions. How many different types of grouping can you see? And within each grouping, how many different groups can you see? So this is getting harder and harder. Anyone? Three. 
And sorry, who was that? Oh, that's Lakshana. Oh, okay. So you say three again? Uh, yeah, I think it's three. Yeah. Anyone want to have a go? Uh, Liban. Liban, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Can you see uh, different ways of grouping these items? So each yeah, thing... so I see size, I see, uh, oh no, a shape, sorry. I see shape the... and size. So I see shape, I don't know about size. So okay, see... okay. So you say shape, shape is one visual channel you can to represent different groups. Yeah. And then for the shape, how many, how many different shapes can you see? I see three. So I see, yeah, circle and yeah, it's like basically two, three different types. Yeah. So yeah, I say three. You say three. And what are those three? So circle, can this kind of ellipse, do you think these kind of horizontal one and the vertical one, are they, are they the same group or not? No, nah, they look different actually. They, they look different. So okay, so four, sorry. Yeah, same. You say four. So there's uh, two types of circles, the big and small one, and then mm -hmm. two kind of ellipses, the horizontal and vertical one. Yeah. Um, the is size one of them as well, because they some of the shapes, some of the sa same shapes have different sizes as well. So. Okay. And if we talk about size, then how many how many groups can you see? Would you say, say, would that, so obviously we have these and the one with big area and this is smaller and the, and these kind of in between, do you say like three groups or three different sizes or areas? Say three different sizes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So actually here, um, the, so we can see and if you, the actual channels it wants to use to represent the values are the width and the height. So what it really, or the initial design intention was to, okay, I'm gonna use the width of the marker to represent one attribute, and then the height of the marker to represent a second attribute. Okay, and then as, but as a result, because the width and height, we don't really see these markers, we as people don't really see it. And um, as with and height as separate channels, but in, instead we, as just say Liban said, we either perceive the difference in areas or the difference in shapes. Okay, so if the intention was to either use the width or the height to separate, we can say, if we only look at width, we have probably two groups. There's the Y, the group with the wide width, and uh, these ones here and these one here. And these ones are the group with uh, very like a narrow width. And similarly for the height, we have different groupings. And these ones now becomes one group and the other becomes a separate group. So in this case, you can see a much stronger interference between the two channels. And because we are users or as humans don't really see width and height as separate channels, and you have much significant, more significant interfer interference because you're starting to perceive either the shape or the area, which actually is not really used to present anything in the initial design. So that's kind of a failure in the actual design because you want to show two attributes and using the width and height, but in the end, the people actually perceiving and try to figure out the areas or shape, which is not what you, what is actually not presenting anything in your design, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do one last one. And again, so how many different groupings you can see? Four. Four. Uh, sorry, I did, again, I didn't quite get, who was that? Oh, that uh, was me, Lakshana. Uh, yeah, uh, I, said, um, I said color was one of them. Color, yeah. I think we're almost getting there. And so I would say most people would agree, say in this example, and the channel or the attribute or we can use for the grouping is color. And uh, you can see maybe um, four different colors. So one, two, so the gray, the purple, 
and of dark blue and light blue. Yeah. So you probably can see four, but actually, and um, what it is doing is it's using these two color saturation as two separate channels. And it's meant to use different amount of green to represent one attribute and different amount of, uh, sorry, red. Uh, red to represent the other channel. But when you put these two together, uh, there's some major interference. It's actually very difficult for a user, we as human to perceive, say, you can pick out one group which has little red element and the other group with lots of red, or, and then another grouping with lots of green and little green. And because we just mix the color naturally, we don't really see this as two separate channels at all. And so in that sense, if you want to use this, both the red and green channel in your visual design to represent two attributes, and you probably will not be able to get what you want to show the user across. Okay. Um, so hopefully that makes some sense. So this is talking about the separability between different channels, whether, for example, if you have one channel, it's position, the other channel is color. They don't interfere with each other. You can quite easily see what else the, and the attributes you want to represent by position or the color. But when we come to this part, if you use two attributes, the width and height, or maybe different color hues, and then the, they will interference or interfere each other quite significantly. And then the user is much harder to see at the actual data you want to show. Okay, and uh, then something else, uh, it's quite useful. Again, it's just to say naturally how we see things and we can like a, uh, kind of utilize that when we design the visualization. And so this is called the pop-out effect. And uh, for example, the task is to find the, the red dot in the visualization. And the interesting part is say, how long does it take? And say, for example, we have this picture here. And I think most people can see the red dot here straight away, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. we can increase the number of dots, total dots. Still, I have only one dot here. And most people can still see it and straight away. Yeah. Now I have a third example. And this time it's not looking for the, okay is still for the red dot. And how many people can see the red dot? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. 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 But it takes slightly longer to find it this time now. Yeah. And in the sense, in this realization, the difference is not the color, but the shape. So there's lots of squares with one and with one circle. And it takes slightly longer. And for this one, yeah. It's harder. Yeah, it's harder. So in the sense, for example, in this example, and when I increase the number of total dots, and it doesn't affect actually how, how long it takes you to find the red one, almost to the instant. Whereas this one, as the more and more you have in the violation, it, it potentially takes longer and longer to find the red dot. And for this one, can you see the red dot? Yeah. yeah. Takes even longer time now. Yeah. Yeah, because now we have two kind of um, two channels being used. One is the shape, the other one is color. So a combination of square and uh, circle with either blue <clears throat> or red colors. Then to see the red circle becomes more difficult. <clears throat> and finally, this one. Can you find still find the red circle? Yeah. Yeah, some people would get much faster than that. Again, so in this situation, when we increase the total number of items, and it will take longer to find the answer, which is this red circle here. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned before, I think we picked the visual as one way to represent the information, partly because the eyes can, pr can process lots of information very quickly in parallel and compared to say the sound or smell or touch. Okay, 
And then when you designed it well, um, you can find the answer very quickly and independent of the number of total items in the visualization. So this will be the top row. This one will be uh, a good example of that. Okay. And then as you add more channels, a difference. For you, so it's more here, you only have one channel of difference, which is the color. And now here you have two. And um, even say, um, sorry, you have a different, actually here you have a different channel now. And the channel is actually a shape instead of color. So this is changing color. This is still uh, one channel, but this time the channel is color, sorry, it's a shape. And it's not less, it's not as effective or as fast as this one. And finally, you will have this one. We have two channels. It's big, and it's usually even uh, slower. OK. And uh, in the worst cases, and uh, it might reduce to serial search. In the sense, you can't really see the answer straight away. You have to go through everything and then to find the answer. And that's what probably be the slowest way. And this is something we, we were hoping to avoid. <clears throat> and then say, and the implication in terms of design of validation. So first depends on the type of your, of your search. We already mentioned that like there's four different types of search and it depends on whether you know the target or whether you know the location is. You try to want to use this type of realization so that people can find the target very quickly and try to avoid and this type of search when the user have to go through everything in the realization to find the answer that will become very slow and very inefficient. For example, user might actually might miss the target altogether even after trying if there's too many. Okay. And so there's many channels have this and um, pop up effect. And obviously in the here, we say the, uh, the color has the pop up effect and the shape um, also have, but maybe to a slightly less extent. And so this one is the tilt level. And you can see that this odd one, which is vertical again, very quickly. This one, can you see the different one? Yeah, take yeah. yeah, so that's this one there, which was a different kind of size or maybe the thickness of the line. That's still quite quick. And this one is okay. So you have this shape, which is this cross here. That's quite quick. Okay. And in this one, can you see which is the odd one or maybe, maybe which was the group, which is a bit odd? Uh, hard to notice. Hard to notice, yeah. yeah. So it really meant to say is uh, it says proximity. So these ones are closer compared to the rest of the other ones. Obviously, this is kind of less obvious to most human eyes if that was used to represent something. Uh, what about this one? Can you see the odd one? Which one is odd? They're three together. Um, <laughs> no, that's the main. I can see what you mean. Means these are closer compared to maybe these two, but that's not quite. One of them has a shadow going the opposite way to the others. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Tommy saw that one. So in this case, the odd one is this one. Uh, it's shadows of the direct different directions compared to the others. And uh, say if you if you have a small screen or small display, you might not see that obviously, very obvious. But also just and um, if we but also this is kind of visual difference, it's much harder or slower to pick out. It takes much longer compared to saying these ones. The shadow direction. Okay, and the finally, can you see anything is odd in this one? So which one is odd in this one? Is 
it the straight line one? As in the Sorry, Lakshana, yeah. Is it is it the two ones which look completely straight because everything else is a bit tilt? Yes, yes. Okay, so Lakshana, I think that's also Lakshana. Yeah, pick the, the right one. So that's the odd one here. So only this pair of lines are parallel. Uh, all the other ones are not. So that's the last one, and and it doesn't pop out that well. So you take a while, and you might not even see it in the end if there's something you want to show. <clears throat> okay, so these are the things you need to you try to kind of utilize when you design your foundation. You want if you want to help people to quickly find something, you might want to represent in the way that say the one you want to show up shows will pop out straight away. That will probably improve the effectiveness of a real design. Um, okay, and then ah, the next one I'm going to talk about is about grouping. Uh, so in the sense of how or which video channel is effective in showing the groupings within the validation. So there's a few different ways. And the first, probably the most uh, useful one is actually to use and called containment. And essentially it's like this. So you can just say, draw a shape to including everything in the same group. So that's usually a very straightforward way for people to perceive this as a group. You, you don't even have to explain. People will naturally think, okay, these things, these three dots, which are covered by the shaded uh, shape, is in one group, and these are the not covered in a separate group. And also very effective is you connect the ones in the same group. So in this case, you connect these three dots together. The so people will naturally think this three, which are connected, is in one group. And the other ones, which are not connected, is in a separate group or different groups. Okay. And also, you can use proximity to show the groupings. And uh, or you can use similarity to show, for example, we can use these. Uh, you can put all the items belongs to the same group together uh, without any say shape or lines, but just by putting them together and um, it will give user the kind of intuition these are in the same groups. And you can use other similarity in the sense of your different channels. And um, if you all use the same color, people will perceive a group, but it's less stronger compared to the this one using location and even less stronger compared to using connections or container. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let me see what's the time now. We are going, yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, I think that's all I want to come as I cover in terms of different markers and channels. So we talked about what are the markers channels and uh, the most more importantly, the effectiveness of different channels and uh, in terms of representing either numerical or categorical attributes. A uh, quick question for you. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 are the similarities between marks and channels? Because they seem to have uh, a quite uh, they, they they seem to be quite similar, you know, in in features really. Um. Okay. Um, so do you want do you want to expand do you want to expand on that a no. bit? Because Can, I think it's it's a bit confusing around around that part that point. Okay, uh, so I think so. My understanding, Chi's question is more about what's the difference between markers and channels. Is it? Yes, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And um, is anyone else can 
answer cheese question. What's the difference between marks and channels? No one. So everyone is uh, slightly confused. I'm, I'm not uh, sure whether the explanation I gave will be because the mark, as we noticed, it's the uh, like an uh, element in an image where the channel uh, controls the appearance of that one, whether it is presented in a color mm -hmm. or uh, its position. So this is what I found out from because, yeah. because because Carl, you could have marks in points, lines areas and volumes yeah and you can also have that in channels too you can have channels in points or lines or yeah i'm not sure exactly what you okay so uh let's have a look at this example yeah just look at this yeah. slide we have some example here this one is meant to show using the spatial region or the location of the items or the, the squares as a channel to represent something. And can someone tell me, say, what is the mark here in this violation? Let's say this is a very simple violation with three squares or black. What are the marks here? Area. Sorry? The area. Ah, oh, okay. So Roy, I think is this area is the mark here. Anyone else? It's the shape. The yes, size. the shape. And so I would say here uh, the mark itself is a square, which is two D shape. And in the sense, each square will represent one items in your data collection. That means you have three items. And uh, what are the channels here? Is it the size? Yeah, so size potentially is representing something. And so smaller size, the rectangle, sorry, square probably means, you know, some smaller values, smaller sales or profit. What are the other channels that's used? Possession. Yeah, exactly. So um, in this example, it really meant for talking about spatial regions, it says, so where these squares are located, the position, and is used to represent whether they are grouped or not. So maybe let's say these three squares are quite close to each other. Maybe there's another few squares up here, and then you probably perceive these ones as a group, and these ones further to the side will be a different group. So the position here is a separate channel. And so really the marks is to represent the items in your data collections. And so it depends on how many you have in your data, the more you have, the more marks you have on the violation. So say if you have a collection of 10 products and you have 10 marks or 10 squares or 10 points or 10 lines, depends on what you choose as a mark. Um, but the number of marks which should match the number of data items. And then the channel is the appearance of these marks. So for each of these marks, you can have position, you can have color, you can have size, or kind of shapes. Yeah, so these are all different appearance. So those are changed, depends on what attributes you want to represent. So that's the difference between markers and channels. And, okay. So, sorry, we, yeah? sorry. So, what exactly is again the mark in here because when we studied it can be represented in point line and area so what is here exactly if we have a specific answer okay so for this yeah, one mark. yeah the mark is area because it's using a 2d shape yeah. okay to okay. represent an item okay yeah i got yeah. it Thank you. yeah uh, okay. i thought it's area can you explain? Okay, it was yeah, yeah. So, so maybe just have a quick look and say how many marks are here? Can we say 
in the second one, the color one, uh, can anyone tell me how many marks are here? Four. Sorry? Four. Four, yeah. So, and what are the marks? Um, yellow, red, green, and blue. Oh, okay. But yellow, red, and blue, so, so the color, the color itself is not a mark. The color is used to represent right. some attributes of the data item. And it depends on maybe the product type or, or something else. So can we say the square or something? Yeah, the mark here is just a square. It's a square. The previous one. So this is square, that is the mark. Okay. So that's, that is the individual squares is mapping to the individual data items in your collection. So that is the mark. And the color does not map to any items in your data collection. So it's used to represent some categorical attributes. Okay. Uh, so can we... Yeah, that's fine. That's not my problem, so. Okay, so, so, so maybe just, just do one more. So there's the next examples. Uh, what is the mark? Point. <laughs> Sorry? Point. Point, yeah. So each of these little points, we assume that's point, it represents an item. And how many are there? Six. So six, six, because we have six, six. points. Mm -hmm. And what is the uh, channel then? The shape. Sorry, the shape? The motion, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. So in this particular case, it's talking about motion. So that means whether the point is moving or not. I think if you have this like, little arrow here, that means it's moving. That is a channel, and that is a channel to represent some attributes about the uh, items. For example, if each point is a product, maybe the static ones, the ones that does not move means it's making profit, and the one that's moving means it's not making profit, okay, losing money. So the motion here is the, the channel. <clears throat> and finally, we have this one. Here, again, it's like a 2D shape with the mark. We have four of these representing four items from the data collection. And then the shape is representing the categorical attributes. For example, again, is a type of data, so it depends on whether it's a cross or circle or square, they're representing different types. So the shape itself representing the attributes and that's the channel. Okay, so I hope that's a bit clearer. What about the mark there for the, it, the shape does not re re represent the mark, like say, for example, the triangle or the, the square or the cycle, cycle. Sorry, can you speak up a bit? So the shape does not re re represent the mark for the last one. So if, say, for example, like you've got the triangle and the square or the circle or the, uh, addition sign so would that if you want to represent that with regard to marks would you say well the triangle is a mark or the the square is a mark can no i would no. say the the mark is 2d shapes mark does not has a say we say the mark is a, a 2d shape but we don't say a mark is a triangle or square or a plus sign and the, that is a channel which is called the shapes and it's something you can change to show some attributes. For example, in this case, you can, for example, you can change the size of 2D shape to represent something, right? Or you can change the color of a 2D shape to represent something, a number. Yeah. You can equally change uh, the actual, the shapes of the 2D shapes and to represent something, in this case, uh, either it's a cycle or a square to represent different types in this example. 
Yeah, because what I'm asking this question, because on Tableau, it actually has a, like a function that you could actually say, um, after, after you finish plotting the graphs, you could actually now say, uh, show me the marks on this plot. And automatically it can come up with an answer saying shape. So it's, it might not even say square or triangle. Um, I'm not exactly sure. So yes, uh, I think by default, Tableau should show all the marks. The marks only depends on how many data points you have in your collection. So in the data set, you have 100 products, then you should uh -huh. have 100 marks. It doesn't interpret it that way. It actually just interprets it with regards to like either shape, you know, and it doesn't actually drill down to say, well, it's a triangle, or it's a circle, you know, or it's a motion, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't drill down that far to actually give you the integrity of that. Um, not sure. Say, I think what happens in Tableau is automatic. If it decides something, it does something automatically. Mm -hmm. It might decide to, for example, using shape to represent mm -hmm. something um, without you interfering. But it's still, yeah. the shape is. But you can definitely change that. And the shape in this case is used to represent an attribute. And that is a channel that's used to represent something. Like, like, like I give you an example right now, uh, maybe that would, would expand better. Um, like for the coursework um, I'm, I'm working on, I'm working on the how side of it. Yeah, for okay. visual, visual encoding. And yeah. Do you want to uh, share your, share, yeah. do you have the visual one you can share? I, I have the, the coursework here, so that's what I'm actually trying to, I can share my screen though, so that's fine. Yeah. I need to get my control first. So you can share. Okay, you can try sharing your screen now. Okay, one second. Um, I can't see anything yet. One second, I'm just trying to choose the... Uh... Okay, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, so um, I've created that with regards to um, the questions from the assignment. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And um, basically, it comes up with like a horizontal chart, yeah, with the uh, different attributes on those charts, like by by regions. So, say for example, you go um, office supply, you could maybe just highlight on any of the any of the marks there, and it comes up with like Norway average profit and um, the different kind of categories like saying office supply or technology. So it gives you all those attributes with regards to technology, office supply and furniture, yeah? Okay, so, we'll get back to the question about the marks and channels. Yeah. So, so if, you now go, if you now go to, if you now go to um, your worksheet, yeah, it says describe shit. Can you see that? Yeah. If, if I click on that, it comes up with that and saying the mark type is bar. Yeah. So so basically, this um, if you if you if you ask that question of what is the mark on this particular horizontal chart, I could say it's a bar. Okay, so I think this is just a terminology. Uh, okay, so if, we don't use it. So first, the marks in the sense of Tableau is not exactly the same as what the, the terms they used in the textbook. But essentially, a bar is just a line, which is a 1D mark. Uh -huh. 
I think it's just it's a difference in terminology. It does not. I think your confusion was to say mm -hmm. what's the difference between mark and channel. Yeah. So for one D, you can okay. Let's say for two D, just for explaining explanation, you can have many different possible shapes. And in the book, they also all called two D shapes. The mark. And in Tableau, it might be called the mark is a circle, the mark is a square, or mark is a cross. Right. Yeah. But it's just different names they use in Tableau, but all these are still just 2D marks. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so I assume we're, we're saying the same thing then, kind of. Sorry? I, I assume we're, we're, we're saying the same thing. You know, I say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's just well, well, yeah. I say when you answer the question, say what is the mark? You should not use what displayed in Tableau as yeah. the answer to say what is the mark. You should look at the time so we different times we mentioned in the lecture on the book and the pick one. It might not be the exact the same term you use in Tableau. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um Actually, um, <coughs> I was uh, going to um, just show this quickly in Tableau as well, because I think now we covered the markers and channels and the maybe it's a bit useful to discuss kind of one of the fundamental ideas in Tableau. And can you all see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. And so if you look at, so that's the start screen of Tableau. And if you, uh, I don't know, maybe you'll start a new data set. Uh, can you see the text at all? Or is that too small? It's quite small, but it's okay. Uh, let me see if we can do something. Um, I think I should make it a bit bigger. Um, arrangement. Mm. I saw the one thing here. Display. Ah, oh, not here. Hmm? That being general, I'm pretty sure it was in display. This one. Mm. Ah, yes, yes, of course, you have to choose scaled larger and even larger. Okay, uh, let me restart the tableau. So hopefully it will become bigger this time. Oh yeah, I can definitely see this becomes, oh, did not change on this side. Does it become any bigger for you or not? No, really? no, I just can't see it properly now. Yeah, it's chopped off the screen. You can only see a bit of it. Okay, okay. I think. So okay, if, if you just do it like that, it should be fine, I think. Okay, let me. Uh, I don't know. Ooh. And sharing this one. Share. 
Is this any better? Yeah. Yeah. So I just displayed it on a smaller screen. That's it. Okay. And uh, so the things I want to discuss is really all these things. So once you open the data in Tableau, it's automatically recognized these are the different tabs in your spreadsheet, like the orders, and it will recognize, try to recognize the record um, entities and measures. Okay. And then you have these things which you can decide how do you want to map the attributes to different channels. So the color size, text, details, and tooltip are the kind of the channels we have, which is not exhaust. There's other, for example, positions. It's do it differently. Uh, so for example, if we want to say, see the, let's say, see the profit, over time, which is order date. Okay, so that's give you a very simple one. And so you're basically specifying these are the two position channels you want. One is rows, which is uh, the Y axis, and the other one is columns with the X, X, X axis. And you can use, you can say, I want to map these two attributes of my data to these two channels. But then you might want to change the marks. So this is where this one comes from. So currently the mark says it's automatic. And you can certainly change this one, for example, to bar. And it will become bar. And it can become area, it's become area. So the, again, the language is slightly different. So this is what it calls error. Essentially, it's a line chart with a color, the region bottom. It's not say it's using an error to represent each product or each year. That's a bit different, but that's how you change mark. And you can use circle. So the circle is closer to kind of like the point we use. And it's when you're not using size, but when you're starting to using size, it becomes differently. Okay, let's say this is, we can change the marks and then we can also change the different channels of these marks by just dragging and dropping different attributes onto of these. And for example, now I have the profit over time and the mark is circle. And for example, maybe I want to show quantity as well. And if I want to use size channel to show the quantity property. So I can drag quantity and drop it onto size. Okay, and then you can see the circles change a little bit. And you can see also a kind of legend on this side, just depends on the size, say that's the smallest one. That side represents 7,500. And the largest one this much uh, represents 12,476. And finally, I can, so probably the category will be better represent as color. So I can drop category onto color. And then in this case, you can start to see, okay, now the category is represented in these three different colors. And here, and tableau automatically and further break down into each circles. So instead of just one circle for each year, you have three circles each year showing different categories. So that's done automatically for you. But here, as you can see, uh, you have the three different categories represented by three different colors. So this is how you change marks uh, and uh, the channels in Tableau. And if you use show me, it will do this automatically. Sometimes it's a little bit magical and may not be the exact way you want. But if you do it yourself, you have much more control this way. And you can map to, say, label. Uh, Kai, can I ask uh, a question? Yeah. What type of uh, mark are countries on a map? Um, OK. So it does not, the, the types of mark doesn't really matter if it's a map or it's a bar chart. It's all the same. So. And let's say if we 
I'm gonna say maybe I can change lo these location. Ah, oh, no, it doesn't do that. Do it automatically do a map. But for example, if you represent each country as a, a point on the map, and then this mark type is still a point. Or if you use something but more complex, you can maybe have a bar or something or circle, use color and size to represent something, then the marks become 3D shape. If that makes sense. So they're still points, regardless of what shape they are. Um, so if it's a point, and uh, then it cannot have shape. Okay. Um, because the shape cannot have any dimensions. So if we point cannot have any dimensions. So if we've got England, France, and Spain, yeah. and they're separate, they're separate what? The 2D shapes, then, even though they're countries on a map. Mm. Okay, let me create one. Uh, let me. Uh, what will be the first one? Let me pick the city. Okay, let's just play country and use this. Ah, not very useful. And uh, city. I'll put the city here. Okay. Yeah. So. Maybe that will be one way. So this is showing the cities in America, right? Yeah, but they're still points. But what if you use the individual states or? No, no, so example? here it's points. And because it's only used the positions of the, these marks to represent something. And for example, if I put the profit as the size, Um, okay, it's not an ideal, but you can see now some points up. Okay, maybe the states will be better. That is too many. Because you know, you can do um, like choropleth maps mm -hmm. rather than the points. Um, it normally gives you the option in the show me bar. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so for now, let's say I'm now using the size to represent uh, the profit, yeah? So yeah. now, now yeah. The, the mark is no longer a point because it has, used, it has a size now and it actually meant something. So <clears throat> it now yeah, becomes yeah, a- but, Yeah, but for example, if you're comparing Texas and New Mexico, they're, yeah. different, they're different sizes, yeah. but then I used color to represent something to distinguish between them. Mm -hmm. What is the actual country? Is it a point still? That's my point. Do you understand? Uh, I'm not quite understand the part about the country. So what do you mean by? So have you, you've, you've seen a choropleth map, right? Where yeah. it distinguishes by color between different countries, different regions, different states. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't use a point. It uses the actual geographical border. Ah, oh, I see. Do you see what okay. I mean? Kai, I think what he's actually talking about is if you actually click on show me um, mm -hmm. back on the map view and then um, instead of the circle map, yeah, you click on that one. So, yeah. for example, Texas is obviously a lot bigger than Oklahoma. So um, I think that's what Tommy's trying to um, explain. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, Thanks. something like this. Yes, so now the, the states are different colors. Yeah. So what, what are they? Are they 2D shapes? Are they just points? At what, what type of mark are they? Um, okay. See, do you see how that's confusing? Mm. Because the size of the state doesn't represent anything. It's just a geographical border. Yes, yes. But I probably would still say that here, the mark is a shape. Um, even though the, you don't really use, for example, the width or height of the shape to represent anything, still, and it's really not a point. It does have, definitely has a shape. Yeah. Different kind of lines to uh, mark out the, what the mark should look like. So we'll just still say the, the mark here is a shape. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, um, so Kai, when you go to analysis, so if you click on analysis now, just say, uh, show Mac. 
Yeah. Where is it? which one do you mean? Go 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 right at the 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 header where 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 that ribbon that you see analysis. So yeah, you've, got, you, analysis. you've got worksheets, you've got dashboard, you've got story, you've got analysis. So right right uh, at the top, yeah. That one. Menu bar. Yeah. So yeah. So, so if you go if you go show mark now show mark labels. So if you click on that one, yeah. It it comes up normally. <clears throat> I mean, not necessarily on on the map, but if you if you have that on a bar, say if you created like a bar chart or something, it comes up with like different attributes on the bars. The minute you 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 click on that show mark, yes. So it comes up with like all that. So it's just yeah. What was the question? So, so what, what, I mean, what are these that it comes up with? Are this not, are this not some representation of the mark? No, this is showing, are uh, showing the labels. The labels are the text, which shows, say, the values for this point. The profit is this much. Yeah. And so uh, we didn't really cover labels, but in this case, oh. for Tableau, it's, it's label is treated just as one of the channels you can use, just as color and size. So you can use color to represent, sorry, you can use size to represent um, the profit, or you can use, also show it as text. Okay. So it is a channel in Tableau, but I would not, not really, and in our discussion, for our discussion purpose, and um, this is not really visualization. Right. We're not really mapping any numbers to say size or position or something. I see. It's not really the kind of visualization we're talking about. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but with regards to your question, I mean, like for my own group, we are talking about like um, getting the average profit for um, the different regions. So I mean, in that in that scenario, then these labels will actually make sense because you can actually use those labels to actually um, baseline the different the different regions with regards to profits or losses. Um, um I mean, I'm not sure. Say, or at least. Just from what you said, I don't quite see why that makes sense. I think you're almost saying it's enough to just show the numbers without using any, say, visualization. No, 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 you have to use visualization and also the numbers. The numbers will actually help you to, to determine uh, what the average profit is, basically. You know, because if you, if, if you go down to dimensions and you drag profits, you know, you drag profit into uh, the row, the row, uh, the row there. Yeah. Then you, you now click on the little drop down by profit. You could now you could now get like your average profit through that. You know because the question for my group is to actually find the average profit for the different regions with uh, the the different in, in the different category with the different categories also too. Something like this. Something like that. Yes. Well. I mean, so we could if you add the labels here, but I would, I would say it may be useful for you to see what exact the number if you, is. If, if you go, um, Kai, if you go um, to some profit, if you go there, there should be a drop down by, 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 by the profit there. And you could just click on it and it gives you like the average, then you could get all the average with regards to uh, the the different readings and the the different categories, basically, because that's what your question for the coursework actually highlights. So, and uh, there's no way we cannot have that on the graph itself without highlighting the numbers. I don't understand. What? What? what okay. Can you? Is this a question or comment? It's a, it's it's a question. <laughs> well, it's a it's a comment and a, a question also too. I would say, yeah. Okay, so if it's a comment, okay, so just basically we're running out of time, okay, yeah. so maybe we can discuss in the lab or something. Okay, that's fine. Or, yeah. or by email, yeah, I think we spent, we, are, we have like only like 10 minutes to cover uh, the rest of the time. Hi, 
can I can I ask you a quick question or is, is that okay? And um, yes, if it's quick. Yeah, what, it's quick. It's regarding the slides. Yeah. Yeah, it's regarding the slides. So if you go back to the slides, so the the um uh, presentation slides that we were doing. Um, yeah. So if you mind. So so um do you, so if you go to page three. Page three. Yeah, slide three. This one. Yeah, yeah. So um, I have a question about the uh for you see data set types. Um, you see you, you see where it says uh geometry uh items and positions. I don't know if you, you can talk see. about data set types. Yeah, yeah. So you see you see the items, would it be like uh profits or something? Like because I was quite confused for that. The positions are understood, but when it came to the items, I didn't really understand that. Do you, do you get what no, I mean? No. Profit so items has to be a sin. Um, so in for example, if you're talking about a supermarket data set, yeah, then the items will be different product you have. In the supermarket, that's the same. And then in the car data set, the items will be the different cars. That's the same. Okay, so so what would it be for the for for, for the uh the one that we're doing then? Well, say I I don't quite understand that we you said in the beginning. You don't understand. Sorry, I didn't quite. I, I'm not sure. I get the question. So. You don't understand what doing, are the items in the data set. We're doing EU superstores, right? Yeah. So what would be the item, like the items on that? Because I, I understand positions, obviously I understand what that means, but I don't I didn't understand like the items, like what, what it would be for so would it be the profit? Would it be the countries? Would it be the, the like if you know what I mean? Okay. So um if you look at the data set of the EU superstore. Each row is one item. So whatever yeah. the row represents is one item. Okay. So what do you think the row in the spreadsheet represents? Sorry? What do you think are the row in the spreadsheet represents? Um, I don't have it on me now. I don't have time. Attributes. So but aren't attributes the columns. Yeah. Did you say they are more? So if you look at, this is the actual data set or something very similar. Yeah. You have your each, so each row is your item. Okay. And you have to figure out what they represent. I put, my guess is each of these represents an order. Okay. And then the order shows the date, the ship date, the custom, what kind of things, well, the category of the things. So that's your data item. And then each columns is a attribute. Attribute, okay, yeah, I understand, okay. Whatever in the attribute, in the columns is attribute. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, okay, let's go back to the actual slides. Hey, can I not oh, how to stop that? Move this out of the way. This as well. Sorry, okay. I also have a question. Sorry, if you go to the Y section, sorry, just go to the Y because we're just in one of your slides, please. Yeah, um, so here, if we want for the search, um, is it possible if we say that it's uh, like explore because we are not known what country has the highest so in order to find out we are searching to uh, like we are using explore for example is it a good justification 
Um, you you have to depend. So that really depends on what you're trying to show. And um, for example, if you're trying to show uh, what is, let's say, you want to show what is the profit, or in UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in that sense, if you show everything on a map, and I would say you would know the location because you as a person would roughly know what yeah. the, where the UK will be on the map, mm -hmm. right? And you know the target because you know you're looking for UK. Yeah. Then in that case, it will become lookup. Okay. Because sure. you know the location and you don't know the target. Okay. And uh, say, if what you are trying to find out is say, are trying to find which country has the most profit, let's say. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Since this question is a bit general. So I was thinking, <clears throat> yeah, it is general. We are looking at the whole yeah, region, like which country has the highest. So we are searching the whole map to find it out. Is it the okay. explore? So, so if we don't know which country, so mm -hmm. you don't know the target, mm -hmm. and then you don't know where it is, mm -hmm. then it becomes explore. Exactly. So you really have to, and um, depends on the kind of question you try to answer and to decide which type of search that is. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Okay. And uh, yeah. We can definitely talk more about these in the lab as well as we went through your demonstration. Okay, uh, so we, I want to cover these, but I think we only have five minutes left, so we probably have to go through this uh, very quickly. And so these are some of the rules of sums. What it meant is some like a general guidelines to say what you should do or should avoid when you design your visualization. And I have to go through this very quickly now, um, but do have a look later uh, in the slides or even read the book chapter. I'm gonna explain. Okay, and so and uh, the first rule sum is no unjustified 3D. Uh, in general, what it means is and don't use 3D just because it looks nice and fancy and interesting. And because we already talked about, say, the depth is not a very good channel to represent quantitative value. If you remember early on in the list, depth is probably one of the worst to represent. If you look at here, and either the 3D size, volume, and all the depths or the 3D position, they're both not very good in terms of representing um, quantitative values. And the other reason is for 3D, you can starting to have these occlusion problems. Things will block the things afterwards. The things in the front will block the things afterwards. Okay, and but there are certain things, for example, this one is the 3D model of the human scan. And it just because the data itself is 3D and the 3D visualization is probably the natural or the best way to show it. Okay. Yeah, and the second one is again very similar related to the first one. Try not to use depths, which is essentially using 3D to show data. Okay, so this is potential occlusion you might have, and we display things in 3D. And so this one looks really bad, partly because um, the nodes closer to you blocking the nodes further away from you. Okay. Okay, again, this is still the related to the 3D part. So if we do 3D visualizations, you might have this perspective distortion. Even though things are exactly the same size, it becomes smaller or appears to be smaller as it becomes further away from you and makes the comparison more difficult. 
Okay. And the second one is an I speech memory uh, in the sense it's very interesting and um, to show say a time series data using animation so here is a animation showing the flights and between europe and the states over time and it looks very nice i'm not sure if you can hear the music but essentially each dot is a flight it's showing how the flight is going and this all looks very beautiful, interesting. But the problem is, uh, the problem is, if I want to ask you what happened at a certain time of the day, and uh, it's you're very difficult to remember exactly what happened. So, if that's the type of the questions you need, for example, use a different type of relations, it might work much better. For example, you have a realization for each different time points, then it's much easier to find answers of. Okay, what the hour traffic looks like at nine o'clock in the morning. Okay, um, so this is another one. So because the 3D validation, or not quite 3D, so the augmented or virtual reality becomes much more popular now, there's a kind of danger to say, okay, if I use virtual reality, it becomes better. And but the problem is when you use virtual reality, you have to pre kind of sacrifice half of the display to display exactly the same amount of information with slightly differences. So the way of these 3D works is say you have these two views, and this is for the left eye and this is for the right eye. There's only slightly difference, so you see kind of it can have a reality effect when you saw it, but that's effect means you can only have half of display to show the information. So that can be a big sacrifice in terms of how much you can actually show. So sometimes it might not worth the cost of being feel in a reality. Okay. And uh, so this is another one is in terms of when you have lots of data, you try to provide an overview and then provide the facility to zoom and filter and the actual details only provides on demand when the user asks for it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that's very quick of the, the last part. So basically these are the readings. So we finished the markers and channels. So that's the chapter five of the book. And then we also went very quickly about the rules of sums today as well. So that's the chapter six. Yeah. And yeah, I think we have to stop here now. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chen. Okay. okay, thank you. And I'll have to stop the recording now.